Well, hello there. Welcome to another edition of How to Bias an Amplifier. I'm Stuart Smith from Berkshire Guitar Amplifiers in Reading, England. On the bench today we have this Marshall DSL 40C, which a customer has sent in to have a couple of new EL34 output tubes fitted and a rebias. Now we're quite lucky this amp is quite simple to bias, uh, but you may not have ever tried it. I'm going to show you and walk you through step by step how to buy, bias this amplifier and to make a start on that I'll take the chassis out and you can rejoin me when we've got the chassis out of the cabinet. I'll see you in a moment. So here we are top side of the amp. I've popped in a couple of brand new uh, JJ EL34s which the customer has requested and I've plugged in my two Euro tubes bias meters and um, we are now ready to bias. I'll flip the amp upside down and put it on my uh, my racks here, my holders, and uh, and then we can try to bring these two tubes into a sensible bias current by adjusting the handy two trim pots which Marshall provide on this amp. So I'll see you when I flip the amp over onto its other side. Okay, here we are now looking at the underside of the chassis and um, you might have already discovered them but here are the two trim pots which adjust the bias on this amplifier. One does one valve or pair of valves if it's the 100 watt version and the other does the other valve or pair of valves. This is the 50 watt version so what we're going to do is turn the amp on and have a look at the bias meters and adjust these two trim pots. You turn it clockwise to get less bias current anti-clockwise to get more bias current so we'll go ahead and turn on now and have a look and see what this amp is biased at at the moment before we start twiddling so we'll turn on the standby switch and uh, we've got 490 volts plate voltage at the moment but it's not being loaded by anything so it will be um, it will be high until the tube starts to draw current. Now, as you can see, they're starting to draw current now. They look fairly evenly matched at present. So the left one's up to going over 40, 40 milliamps, and the right one 37. Not too bad to bias on this. I would bias these at about uh, 30, 35 milliamps. So what I'm going to do is to stick this trimming tool into this pot here and I'm going to turn it clockwise to reduce the current on the left hand meter. See I'm turning it clockwise now and that's going down. I've obviously gone a bit too far. I'm going anti-clockwise now. I'm aiming for about 35 milliamps. That will do for the moment. The other one's at 39, so I'm going to swap from this to this one. And again, I'm going clockwise to reduce the bias current. Clockwise, again down to about, yes, yeah, 35 milliamps. There we go, they're, they're both fairly similar. As I always say in my videos, don't sweat a few milliamps here or there, it really doesn't matter. If these were mismatched by 5 or 6 milliamps, you'd hardly hear the difference. And if you did, you'd like the difference because it would be slightly more richer harmonically. Um, exact matching of tubes is for high fine nuts and we don't need it on guitar amps. But we may as well match them if we're able to without too much drama. I see that right one's crept up a little bit. This does often happen as the amp heats up. So again, I'll just give that a little bit of a tweak to bring it down. Maybe a bit higher. 35. And uh, there we go, they're fairly well matched now. 
and um, that's it, job done. Relatively straightforward on this amp due to the fact that they've handily fitted a couple of trim pots for us, which they often don't on amplifiers. So thank you very much Marshall on this occasion for doing that. Well that was pretty straightforward wasn't it? It didn't give us too much drama to whip the chassis out and uh, check the bias of the output tubes and make a couple of adjustments to, the, to those handy trim pots which Marshall have fitted to this amp. I only wish more amplifiers had a handy trim pot that you could adjust and get to easily, wouldn't that be nice? The other thing about this amplifier is that the um, HT fuse is on the inside on the board so if you ever blow the HT fuse on this you have to completely dismantle the amplifier take out the chassis to replace the clip-on fuse which is um, on the board I mean what's that all about saving 20 pence for an external fuse holder but there you go so hope you enjoyed that in my how to buy a series and I'll catch you on the next amplifier